Hello everybody and welcome to a new episode of Backpacking TV. I'm Eric Hansen and today I am in my backyard in the lovely fall weather to hopefully help you with your tent setup. Now uh, there are four common mistakes that people make when setting up a tent and uh, I'm here to help dispel those myths. Kovo here is going to be helping me with the tent video as well. But uh, if you've ever set up a tent, there's a good chance that you've made one, at least one of these mistakes. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's get into the tent video. So when uh, Kovo and I go camping, we like to set up our tent together. He's a very helpful dog. But uh, one thing he really kind of stinks at is uh, he always forgets something very important. Let me show you what that is. So almost every rain fly, at least that I'm aware of, has something right here on the underside of the rain fly. Just a little bit of Velcro. And I think if you're like me, for a long time, everybody just ignores this. But what is it even for? Well, uh, this is going to be when you're setting up your rain fly, it's very important that you actually attach that to your tent poles. So there's typically at least four of them uh, around the tent. Sometimes there's more. Sometimes there's a couple across the top. So what this does is that is going to create another anchor point from the rain fly to the tent itself. And now it's really important for inclement weather. So that will make your tent vastly stronger. If you just simply connect your four corners and maybe the outside of the rain, uh, the rain fly pitched out, that's pretty good and that's what a lot of people do. But the mistake is that they can really strengthen up the structure, which is especially helpful if you have high winds or if you have a storm with potentially snow. <laughs> because, <laughs> thanks buddy. Uh, because snow is very heavy and it can collapse your tent if you don't brush the snow off. Uh, but this will really help make your tent poles much more rigid as it's connected in multiple places. So if you didn't know about those, make sure that every time you set that up, it's just a simple extra step that will greatly strengthen your tent. Okay, so after you've got your rain fly attached on the corners and on the vestibule of your tent, you're doing pretty good, but there's one thing that I see all the time, and that's uh, people just not tensioning out their rain flies properly. So you see this sag, this is going to be a major pain in the butt if you have any inclement weather at all. Even if it's just a light breeze, this will just kind of be flapping around all night and we definitely don't want that. And especially if the weather really picks up and you get some violent wind or violent weather or rain, what this is gonna do, this is like a nylon and this, if it gets wet, it will become even more flexible, more loose, more relaxed. And this will start to just sit on the inner part of the tent. And if this rain fly is really wet, as it's sitting on the inner part of the tent, that moisture is actually gonna pass through both those layers and come inside your tent. You definitely don't want that. So in order to maximize not only the stability, but the interior dryness, one of the easiest things you can do is just take all of these points, go around all corners, all places that they're staked out, just start tensioning them up. Okay, just by taking that simple step, you can see how much more rigid this is. It's also, for all you Instagrammers out there, it's gonna make your tents look a lot better, photograph way better. So that's really ultimately the most important thing that I'm talking about here. But yeah, this a good, strong, well-tensioned tent is actually significantly stronger than a tent that is not properly tensioned out. Next mistake that people overlook is the purpose of that string that comes with your tent. You know, you open up your tent, you pull out the rain fly, you pull out the main tent, you get your stakes, and then there's string. Well, what the heck are you supposed to do with it? Well, they're guy lines, and they are meant to also increase the stability of your tent. Now, not guidelines, but guy lines. And so what you do is you take that, and uh, some are easier than others. This one setup is very simple. Just simply string that through. There's usually points like this that have some reflective material on the tent. Put that on and then you're going to stake it out. Doesn't have to be too crazy tight yet. Add in my stake and then 
can get that tension nice and tight. So now that I have now four guy lines set up, one at each corner, I've got my Velcro in place. I've got my well-tensioned anchor points. Everything is looking really sharp. And this tent is bomber. It can withstand some serious wind and weather that's gonna come in and I will be just fine. Those are three main points that are really going to help with a good night's sleep, especially if any weather comes in. No more flappy tents, no more rain getting in through the sidewalls. This is really gonna help you out with your camping experience. But there's still one more thing that I wanna talk about, and that is a properly ventilated tent. A lot of tents have some ventilation points somewhere on the tent. This one here, is right underneath this tent. And I recommend, depending on weather, opening this baby up. Throughout the night, if you have two people in a tent, you're just breathing out moisture all night long and it really has nowhere to go. And so you might notice when you wake up that the inside of your tent maybe even is dripping wet. And that's probably because you didn't properly ventilate your tent. So just by simply opening up these vents, uh, you can let yourself have a much more dry environment eat inside, even if it's raining all night. A big mistake that people make is that it's rainy outside, so they close up all of the venting. Well, that means it's really humid, there's a lot of moisture everywhere, and that's going to build up on the inside of your tent if you don't open up those vents. That's it. That's the whole thing. Four things that you may have done wrong in the history of backpacking, if you've ever gone tent camping before. Avoid these mistakes by implementing these new techniques. They're on almost every tent that you can buy for backpacking. So this will really help your camping experience. Hey, I hope you found that helpful. If you did, leave it in the comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Make sure that you are subscribed here on the channel. And if you did like the video, give it that thumbs up. It really helps us out. I'm Eric Hansen. I'm saying goodbye from my backyard. I'm gonna go uh, throw the ball for my dog now.